Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are talking about how Adam Aaron checkmates short and says game over, how we're going to be seeing another short seller collapse, the AMC toxic swaps getting too big, and many more in this video. Straight away, we're starting with this. AMC CEO says bankruptcy is inconceivable as shares hit 52 weeks low. Now, this is very important. And again, this is why it's game over and it's checkmate for short. Because again, short won AMC to go bankrupt. But now that bankruptcy is completely off the table and Adam Aaron doesn't think there is a slight possibility, that means it's game over for short. If you take a look at more detail for this and understand why it's happening, while laden with $4.5 billion in debt, AMC has enough cash on hand to get through 2024 according to Aaron. From there the executive thinks it will be smooth sailing since Aaron is predicting a robust 2025 and 2026 at the box office. So before we go further more let's break this down. First is understanding that right now for 2024 it doesn't look like there's going to be anything that will affect AMC. So where we are sitting as a company is extremely well and what we're going to be looking at is going to 2025 and 2026 we're definitely going to be seeing major improvements because of the prediction of a robust 2025 and 2026 box office. So, and he says, I actually think the problem has already been solved. And so furthermore, you can see that money in the bank is suggesting me that not only have we weathered the storm so far, but to the extent that there's any storm left, we will weather that as well. So you can see, and I think this is very, very important for what's about to happen, is obviously the things he's talking about. So he's saying the things that are affecting AMC right now, we have obviously withstood it. And again, it's very important to understand that by the shorts pushing the price of AMC down, it obviously restricts our ability to raise money because on one hand, we either have to sell more shares or on the other hand, if we decide on a fixed amount of shares, we'll raise less money because of the share price being pushed down. And so these are the problems that we are facing, but we have identified the problems and we have beaten the problem. So by avoiding bankruptcy, by saying bankruptcy is inconceivable, what we are sitting right now is again, shorts panicking because what we've seen for AMC and what we've seen from short is that AMC increasing their cash, improving their fundamentals. But whereas if we're looking at the shorts of AMC, they're losing cash every single day. They're decreasing in their revenue and their fundamentals. And so when you take a look at what's happening overall, AMC is improving and shorts are actually going down. And that's exactly what's happening right now. And again, it's key that AMC doesn't go bankrupt because that means the shorts are still trapped. And so what I think here is essentially Adam Aaron saying, checkmate short and is saying that it's game over and is that you guys will be in this play forever there is no way for you guys to get out and you will have to pay us and this pairs very well with the post that we talked about recently about how adam aaron actually wants a moas because of the shares he has in amc i'm curious to hear what you guys think about that furthermore if we take a look at what's happening with shorts right now and you can see how this is affecting them so we have news coming like this coming out but what we're seeing right now is again the short interest still going up at 20 0.56%. You can see in one month we have a 58.52% increase. You guys can also see the short interest going up to 54 million shares. So every single day, the share price is increasing um, for the short interest. And so what we can see for this is understanding that firstly, by obviously increasing the short, what they're doing is pushing the price down. And again, why are they pushing price down? Because if AMC were to be able to raise money, then again, we avoid bankruptcy. And that's not what they want. And that's why they're still continuously increasing the shares um, in shorting and to try and decrease the the value of AMC. Because if we take a look at this right now, what we can see is this. Credit Suisse 2, US prepared to handle collapse of major Wall Street bank. Now, this is actually out of nowhere, but you can see from this article, FDIC chief says US is ready if big Wall Street bank ever failed. So this is obviously out of nowhere. And we've seen many news recently talking about how they can help big banks from not collapsing, how they can prevent big banks from collapsing, and here how they are ready if big Wall Street bank ever failed. And so it's very weird that all of a sudden there are all of these new uh, articles, there are new rules, there are new regulations, new um, policies being implemented, all to prevent 
big banks from falling or to prevent big um, institutions from collapsing in Wall Street. Now, again, pair this up with what's happening with AMC right now, you start to see a correlation of what is actually happening. And so we've already seen what happened to Credit Suisse who hold toxic swords, which we'll be talking about later on. And now we're seeing the FDIC actually talk about how the US is ready if big Wall Street bank ever fail. So it does seemingly look like on the radar, there is actually potentials for potentially big Wall Street banks, big institutions to actually failing and collapsing. And that's why they're saying this to prevent any fear from happening. Also, to talk about this, we have to understand that this is the FDIC, which is different from the FICC, which we'll be talking about in a second. You guys can see this. UBS on the brink of Switzerland's too big to fail reckoning. And again, this is going off what we talked about recently, and this is why I said there's a difference, where Credit Suisse is a participant in the FICC. So we talked about how Credit Suisse being in the FICC is essentially them getting another lifeline where they get access to more liquidity. And that's to obviously help them weather the toxic swaps that they have. But re remember, UBS obviously purchasing um, Credit Suisse also holds the toxic swaps. And you can see how everything is becoming too much of a problem. Archegos failed because of the toxic swaps. Then when Credit Suisse inherited that, they also failed. And UBS inherited Credit Suisse, and now they are also starting to fail as we see them on the brink of too big to fail reckoning. And so you can obviously understand that there is something happening here. And again, with all the due diligence, with all the data that we've seen in the past, we can obviously conclude that again, it's due to the toxic swaps of AMC and GME, and of course many more as well, but we knew detrimental damage that these swaps actually have towards the these short sellers. And so you can see how, again, even though they're trying to gain access to new lifelines, to new liquidity, they are still in a very, very bad position. And so pair this up with everything we've said, we've seen here on the brink of Switzerland's too big to fail as we see a uh, short sell of AMC, as we see FDIC said that they are ready if big Wall Street Bank ever failed. And as we see talking about AMC CEO talks about bankruptcy is inconceivable, you can start to make links of what's actually happening in the market right now, where the short sellers who've been praying and betting on the short play of AMC is all starting to see this play actually crumble and collapse. And they're trying to find ways out of it, whether it's with, again, the government FICC, whether it's with the FDIC or any other things that we've seen. Furthermore, you can see how another short seller is also panicking. So in the latest update on Citadel's lawsuit against the SEC, the CAT system, the market maker expanded on the commission's inability to manage cyber risk, citing the conveniently timed hack to their X account regarding the Bitcoin ETF product announcement. So we can see the desperation coming in from Citadel, who again is partnering up with multiple other short sellers as well to combat against the SEC implementation of the CAT system, which again, the CAT system brings transparency to the market, exposing all the short positions of these short sellers and so this is why they are obviously against it you can see here they're obviously talking about the sec's inability to manage cyber risks however what they don't manage to say is how Citadel was also infamous for making a mistake where they quote unquote had a bug in their system which locked short as long positions, which again caused millions and if not billions of dollars for the market. And so again, if you're going to make the point about how SEC has an inability to manage cyber risk, then you should also understand that if the CAT system were to be implemented, you guys, even if you guys had a bug which marked short as longs, then this will be solved with the CAT system. But obviously, they don't care about that. They only care for their own benefits. That's why they're trying to fight the CAT system because it brings more harm than benefit towards these short sellers. And again, the very most important thing is that it brings a ton of benefit for retail investors as it brings transparency and also uh, almost equal um, advantages for both sides in the game, which allows us to have a better playing field for the retail investors. And that's why they are trying to fight against it. Furthermore, you can see this. All institutions are red and their averages are much higher than $3. They continue to hold and loan out shares because the inner price will go up and FUD is fun to spread when you make money both ways. Do whatever you want. I'm going to keep buying and holding. Where we see the groups uh, in, in institutions who are buying into AMC and you can see their actual average buy price. And you can see all of the price, even at the lowest of 7.11 here, are all higher 
than the current market price of where we are sitting at. So if institutions are firstly willing to buy at the current price of AMC, they are willing to hold on to AMC, even though we're seeing companies, you know, dropping 94%, dropping 60%, dropping 58%, and they're still willing to hold, then it makes sense what they think about AMC. It allows us to understand that again, they believe in the longevity of AMC and they already knew that bankruptcy was off the table and they knew that in the long run, the squeeze will happen and that's where it would benefit the most. So again, everything we talked about in this video shows how short sellers are in an extremely bad position right now because of everything that's happening, whether it's institutions holding onto AMC, whether it's the fact they're facting against the uh, CAT system, again, failing um, as a bank, uh, US Wall Street Bank failing as well, and many more that we talked about in this video. So this is why it's very important to understand in the long run, AMC retail investors is going to win. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.